Hey y'all, I'm James Wright. Welcome to my shop. Today we're fixing this broken IKEA stool. Uh, is it worth it? Let's find out. So this is an IKEA stool that we got as a stopgap to uh, work in our kitchen. And uh, someday I'm going to build a new set of stools, but I don't have the time to do that right now. And I really want to have a good set of stools. And this one had one broken leg and then the kids stood up on it and broke the other one. And I figured, let's, let, let's fix it. Let's, let's do some, some work on it and, and fix an IKEA stool rather than replacing and, and buying new. So... Yeah, we're going to use some 100-year-old quarter sawn white oak to replace a press board pine whatnot leg. <laughs> this is going to be a lot of fun. So I have the, the original one here, and this stretcher is yeah, about that wide, but mm, about that. And so I'm going to take this piece of uh, scrap 100-year-old white oak that I had pulled out of a dresser that was falling apart, and I'm going to reuse this piece. And it happened to be exactly the right length I needed, which is kind of nice. So I just needed to, to rip it down and then put the tenons on the other end and hope the tenons fit into the existing mortises. So we're going to cut one end down and then plane those two edges smooth and then I can cut the other one off and we can get two stretchers out of this one piece. The fun part is whatever I do once I have to do again and if I do it on one end I've got to do it on four of them and so uh, it's kind of one of these good processes that you can just sit down in the shop and relax and put on some music or an audiobook and enjoy your time. So just like that we have two stretcher sticks. I need to start creating the shoulder on these. Now they're angled and the nice thing is they're just simple square angled so I can mark one end with the marking knife and then I can use my bevel gauge to mark whatever the bevel is. They're not a compound cut which makes it a lot simpler. If it is a compound cut then rather than using a square here I use a bevel here and then a different bevel on the other side but in this case I just have to use the one bevel and these the square so we can go off of that mark and then run around it with the bevel to match the existing one which it's really nice when you're doing a replacement and you've got an existing one you can work off of it makes everything kind of simple for the tenon we're going to start by marking out the the tenon with a tenon marking gauge mortising marking gauge, mortising gauge, whatever you want to call the thing. And then we can start cutting down the cheeks. Now I could split these out and usually I would cut out the shoulders first and then come in and split out the little piece. And that's a lot of fun. But in this case, it was kind of small and delicate and nice wood and I was feeling really artsy fartsy. So we're going to cut this whole thing down rather than splitting it out just in case the grain happens to be going off. Even though this is a really, really nice piece of straight grained oak. Uh, yeah, we're going to do that. So we cut down the cheeks and now we can cut down the shoulders until this little piece pops off. And I don't want to go too far because this tendon is not very long. So we're going to stop a little bit short, come from the other side, and oh wow, that popped off really quickly. And then rinse and repeat because we've got eight of these to do. Two on each one and then eight of them in total. Come back in, clean up those edges, and we've got one side done. So for the tenons, they actually need to come off at an angle. So I'm going to put the original on here and mark where they're at. Then I can use this end of the square to make them come off of the shoulder square. With that simple mark, we can then cut down the other cheeks and then the other shoulders because it's going to have four of them running all the way around it. Now, one of the things I didn't shoot is right now I'm cutting these into a square tenon. Um, and unfortunately, I forgot to turn on the camera when I grabbed a file and rounded it. And so I just grabbed a file to round over the corners until it wiggles in there nice and tight. I don't need anything terribly perfect, but because there's going to be no hardware on this, it's just glue, uh, we want to make it relatively tight. And so we're going to wiggle this in and that works out well. And then I can go back in and do the other three. I just wanted to make sure the first one fit before continuing continuing on a little farther, but this is one of those times when you can kind of zen out and relax and really enjoy it. We want to put a light chamfer on all the corners. Uh, the original ones just had a very light round over, and I actually wanted to put a, a slightly heavier chamfer, something that just stood out a bit. Uh, it ended up being about an eighth inch on the face of the chamfer. A few quick passes, and it is done. And then it's ready to put in place. Now I could finish them beforehand but I found it a little bit easier to finish them when it's all assembled and after glue up because it's just two pieces so you're not going in and out of it. Whenever I'm doing a large chair I'll often uh, do all the pre-finishing before putting it together so that I don't get any glue squeeze out causing problems. But because of these just small connections I'd rather finish it afterwards. I'm going to be using some Total Boat high performance epoxy as that uh, really works out well in here and especially when you're going into this with the cross grain connections and weird things 
the epoxy really is a, a far superior uh, glue for this. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, use high glue, you can reverse it. This is an Ikea stool. I, I'm not looking for something that's reversible. I want something that will lock together and, and, and just be something I don't have to think about. If I need to in the future, I'll put a screw into it because it's probably going to be one of the legs that break, not these stretchers. Now, here you also notice that one of these is, is this way, and the other one is, is kind of at that weird angle. And I was starting to notice that at this point, and then I uh, figured, you know, let me, let me put this together and just see if something works when I tighten all these down. And so after tightening all the bolts, I went back and took a look at it and then realized, yeah, one of these was off but there's nothing I can really do about it. So let's clamp this up. So we're gonna throw a couple clamps on these legs as the bottoms are held together. It makes it really easy just to squeeze the top. And then after dry up, you can see, yeah, um, this is an Ikea stool. <laughs> they put the mortises in the wrong place. So one of these is at a different height than all the others. Why? I don't know. It's Ikea, what do you expect? So let's take the clamps off and then actually do the finishing on this. I was kind of wondering about this and looking at it and thinking, wow, maybe I should build a whole new one or maybe I should do with the other stretchers just to make everything balance out. And then I realized, you know what? I, I kind of like the idea of it being a contrasting, this is what I have repaired, this is the part that I have done to it and trying not to hide it into what the, the original Ikea factory put in there. And I kind of like the look of that. For the finish, Boiled linseed oil and paste wax. Now, normally I would use a, a hard wax finish on this. Uh, it would provide a little more protection. But in this case, I just wanted that nice glow to come out, especially with this white oak. It is so beautiful. And then I'm going to be using some of my own paste wax, which you can buy on woodbyright.com. But yeah, <laughs> this is honestly a really fun project, and I enjoyed every bit of it. And I'm looking forward to the day that I get to replace something else, because this was a lot of fun. So, uh, yeah, there you have it. Uh, we went from this, which is, it, it's, I'm guessing it's like a poplar. It's a very, very soft wood, and I normally would not use that for rungs. And in this particular case, we upgraded it to 100-year-old white oak, quarter sawn white oak with all of the beauty that comes with it. And was it worth it? I, I don't know. I got a really good deal on the set of stools, which worked great for our kitchen, uh, except for this one had a broken rail and the other one was about to break. And so, uh, I got a good deal on it. I could build a full set of stools, but that would take me probably about a week and a half to two weeks worth of work in the shop, and it would have cost me a significant amount more for all of that oak, not to mention I'd have to do the upholstery, which I may end up redoing the upholstery on these at some point. But if you really start thinking about the time and effort, buying four stools for 20 bucks and replacing a couple spindles, which really took me less than an hour total, I would say that's a much better deal. Now, is this stool going to last me for centuries and something I patched down to the grandkids? Uh, probably not. I would be very happy to get another five to 10 years out of it for the $20 I spent on it. And I'm probably going to reupholster it at some time, or maybe I will end up building a whole set for myself at some time in the future when I want something specific. But we just moved in the house and I wanted a set of stools, so let's fix them up. This is one of those controversial topics between repair and replace. And honestly, whenever possible, I like to repair and have a little bit of fun. And this particular one was a simple tenon with a little bit of an angle and it worked out really well. I enjoyed it. Even with the out of a line mortise that's a quarter inch off, it still works really well. And honestly, I like it. I had thought about staining the oak to match this, but then I thought, you know what? I, I kind of want it to stand out. I want to say that I did this. I, I didn't do that. Uh, sort of as an advertisement, if anyone walks in the house, that's very clear to see what I did and what I did not do. Especially with Ikea furniture. I, I don't want to take credit for anything that they did. But all that being said, it was a fun hour in the shop and I really enjoyed my time. And now every time I walk by this, I'm like, hmm, maybe I should replace the other spindles. And then, oh, you know what? Maybe rather than play, I should do the legs next time too. And oh, the seat straight. I should re... Uh, I'll soon have a whole new stool. Or maybe I'll just build a stool. We'll see what the future holds. So I hope you like this. If you have any questions, thoughts, ideas, or snide remarks, throw those down in the comments down below. And yes, I do enjoy snide remarks. Uh, some of those comments are, are, are phenomenal and I like sharing with other people. So thank you for sending those as well as they do help out the channel. Anytime you like, comment, share, subscribe. You've heard the spiel before, thank you. But if you really want to be amazing and support this channel, then think about joining these people over here. Those are some of the patrons on Patreon. Patrons are the reason this channel exists and the reason I get to do fun things like this. If you like seeing that and want to see more in the future, think about becoming a patron and supporting the channel. I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Honestly, maybe I will make some new stools. Of course, I'm gonna have to make a little one first so I can show my wife. I'll, I'll give her some of my stool samples.